A very good day to you people. My name is Mohit and guys uh, today I'm gonna talk about uh, arrays in flash. Guys I have flash CS 5.5 open in front of you. The stage is wide and the size of the stage is 550 by 400 pixels and guys on the stage I have eight movie clips all right uh, they are the s the same symbol or they are uh, many or different uh, instances of the same symbol let me go to the library panel show to you guys all the eight bulbs that you see on the stage are nothing but different instances of the same symbol which is symbol one which is lying in the library all right although they are uh, you know replicas of the same symbol if I actually click on them one by one you can see that they have different instance names the first bulb uh, has been given an instance name of B1 the second one B2 the third one B3 and the eighth one B8 so it's B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, B6, B7 and B8 these are the instance names of the eight bulbs that are lying on the flash stage cool okay before I actually open up the actions panel and show you the action script I would want to test the movie and then we'll talk about the action script so let me hit control enter on the keyboard guys to test the movies and guys as you can see one by one the bulbs are kind of getting switched off okay now in this tutorial guys I've attempted to explain how arrays are formed are created and uh, how arrays work the array behavior also um, I've, I've, exp I've uh, attempted to explain uh, how the timer function in flash actually works okay so now guys uh, the key question what exactly are arrays arrays are nothing but uh, let me say mega variables or a collection of variables a cluster of variables so when many uh, variables come together they form an array right so uh, now let's get inside the actions panel and uh, beg your pardon okay I'm sorry now guys this is the script that's firing off the action of the behavior that you just saw uh, let's discuss uh, each and every line one by one now let's talk about line number two first what I've done is I've created a variable my array right and then I'm telling out here that it's of the type array so when you create a number variable you declare that uh, the type is a number when you create a s s you know uh, a string variable you declare that the type is a string similarly when you create uh, an array you declare that the type is an array although guys this this type that I've declared here is optional and you can completely do away with it but it's a good habit to mention the type okay now what I've done is inside the array uh, the values that are fed in are nothing but the different bulb movie clip names okay so starting b1 ending b8 I've uh, as I said I've clustered or uh, grouped all the uh, movie clips together in this array called my array all right and guys um, I don't know how many of you actually have, have worked with the the timers but timers are used uh, very often uh, when working with flash action script 3 so for most of you it should not uh, be new but for those of you uh, who have not worked with uh, the timer let me explain that so in line number five what I've done is I've I have uh, declared a variable called my timer and here I'm declaring that it's of the type timer just 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 as I've declared that the array uh, my array is of the type array I'm declaring out here that this variable is of the type timer okay and which is equal to new timer so basically I'm creating a new instance of the timer okay now guys I have two arguments out here the first argument 
uh, the first value uh, is the delay in milliseconds which is 1000 milliseconds uh, which is equal to one second and the second uh, argument or the value is uh, the number of times the timer should uh, fire before it actually comes to a halt so I would want my timer to fire eight times before it actually comes to a halt alright and then I have attached an event listener to the timer which is my timer and uh, I'm telling flash that uh, every time the timer ticks it should uh, you know execute a function timer handler which I have uh, declared in uh, or have defined in line number eight and the function timer handler guys what it actually does is the first thing it does is that it traces uh, the length of the array so guys I have eight movie clips clustered or grouped inside the array so the first time uh, it's gonna show up number eight all right and then it'll show a different value which will depend on the next line and let me explain the next line that is the most important line uh, out here so out here I'm saying that my array dot pop parent parent now what does the dot pop method do uh, the dot pop method what it does is it removes the last entry from the array so when I pop for the first time the movie clip B8 should be extracted or removed from the array okay so through line number 8 through the dot pop parent parent method I'm removing the last movie clip or extracting the last movie clip from the array okay and uh, then I'm attaching then I'm, I'm through the alpha property I'm dropping its uh, transparency to a point for a 40 percent okay but that renders the array one entry less or one value less so from the tail of the array one uh, portion is actually removed physically it's gone it's taken off okay so uh, and that extracted portion has uh, the alpha property applied to it which then drops the alpha to a point four. that is the reason guys you notice that from the tail of the array the bulbs actually start to switch off let me show it to you once again a control enter on the keyboard guys so you'll notice that as the array is getting popped not only is the length of the array uh, gets shortened by one every time the bulbs uh, have a reduced alpha right so through the pop method guys I can extract the last portion of the array similarly guys I have yet another method that I want to talk about and that's called the shift method let me just change the pop to a shift now what shift does is instead of removing the values from the tail of the array the shift method would remove the values from the head of the array or from the beginning of the array the start of the array not the end of the array okay so through the shift method I'll be calling or extracting the movie clips one by one from the beginning so the B1 would be targeted first then B2 and then B3 not only is it targeted guys it's actually removed so in the end my dot length becomes zero okay so the timer function that we are running would completely void the array the array whether I use the shift method or whether I use the pop method would extract all the values and in the end guys once the timer function has finished there would be nothing left in the array the array would be a complete void let me show you the shift method first so a control enter on the keyboard guys and let's see so with the pop method you notice that uh, the bulbs were actually losing their alpha from the tail now it's losing their alpha from the head and guys whether I use the pop method or whether I use the shift method you can notice that the length that I'm tracing uh, reduces from 8 to 7 7 to 6 4 5 3 to 1 and I'm sure you understand right guys let's go down and uh, 
Okay. In line number 16, guys, whenever you make a timer, the timer will not run unless and until you start the timer. Okay. So, fine. Let's talk about line number 18. In line number 18, what I've done is uh, the timer that I've defined earlier, I've added yet another event listener to it. But this time, it's of the type uh, complete. So, this uh, function, complete handler, gets fired off only when the timer is complete okay and once the timer is complete uh, the function complete handler what it actually does is since the array is now completely void or it does not have any of the values of the movie clips placed inside I'm then pushing in the values now the dot push method is uh, a method through which you can push values uh, inside the array but then again you add it to the end of the array which is the tail of the array okay so added number one to the tail of the array through line number 22 line number 23 adds one more value to the tail of the end of the array uh, the unshift method guys what it actually does is it does add a string out here these two are numbers this is a string now the unshift methods method does actually add a string to the array but to the head of the array and not the tail all right so the push and the pop target the tail the unshift and shift target the beginning or the start of the array all right so guys as you can see once i've pushed two values two numbers and i've unshift two more values you'll see that the values 1 and 2 actually get added to the beginning I've traced the values through line number 26 guys they get added to the beginning of the array and the values uh, number 1 and number 2 get added to the tail or the end of the array so that is the difference between uh, push and pop shift and unshift one targets the head or the start the other one targets the tail right so if this concept is clear guys let me move ahead let me uh, first disable certain areas of the action script let me apply a block comment here right let me also apply a block comment here right okay guys just in case I want to reference uh, the first value in the array which is b1 I can write it uh, like this let me show it to you my array and then in square brackets I can write a 0 that is the index of the array okay so if I were to trace this value guys if I were to trace this specific value it will bring up uh, this movie clip which is b1 okay since in the array b1 has an index of 0 b2 has an index of 1 this one has 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 right so the last val value which is b8 the movie clip b8 should have a index of 7 right so let's construct uh, another statement which should be very interesting okay let me say variable counter is equal to my timer dot current count okay now I have declared a variable called counter and, and I'm making it equal to the current count of my timer what is current count now guys the current count is the uh, is this uh, let me explain it this way guys this number 8 is the repeat count or how many times the timer is supposed to repeat and the first time the timer fires the current count is 1 the second time the the timer fires the current count is 2 so this value current count is going to change every single time from 1 to 8 okay so this variable counter is going to acquire a value from 1 to 8 and if I were to say a minus 1 out here 
which means that uh, now my counter is going to acquire a value uh, from 0 to 7 right and I'll tell you why am I uh, feeding this value 0 to 7 uh, to this uh, variable counter let me go ahead and say my array and uh, then the square brackets and guys as I said you can actually reference the different values or the different movie clips inside my array through their index number 0 would be b1 uh, 1 would be b2 movie clip but instead of uh, putting a 0 and 1 out here I'm gonna put the variable counter out here okay so a as I know the counter is going to change from uh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and it'll end at 7 and then what I'm going to say is a dot and then I'm going to say visible is equal to false right so basically what I'm saying is every time the the timer is run you should first reference b1 then b2 then b3 and in the end b8 and then uh, you know and make their visibility false or make them disappear let's test that out a control enter on the keyboard guys cool wonderful all right so guys uh, in a nutshell let me just reiterate uh, whatever we have learned we have learned the my array dot length method let me uh, remove the comment so we have learned the my array dot length method we have talked about the shift and unshift we have talked about pop and push all right let me uncomment this bit as well okay and we have also understood how we can through the uh, index number of the array reference or target specific items in the end guys uh, before I actually uh, come to an end may I may take this tutorial to an end I would like to talk about the reverse method guys uh, what I can do is I can say something like uh, trace my array dot reverse uh, this is self uh, explanatory guys and what this actually does is it just reverses the order of the array let me test it uh, and before that let me uncomment this much let me comment this much okay control enter right so guys now this array that you see 2 1 2 1 is actually the result of the array uh, having been reversed it w see two values were pushed in which is 2 and 1 and we talked and we had seen that the push method actually places the values towards the end of the array the unshift towards the beginning but if you see uh, the reverse has happened out here if when I've traced it in line number 30 so guys I hope you like this tutorial it actually conveyed how uh, you know how arrays work now arrays are used in conjunction with loops a lot I haven't talked about uh, loops probably in uh, another tutorial guys so I'll see you very soon with yet another Flash and ActionScript 3 tutorial. Have a good day. Peace. Bye-bye.